Hi, I'm Alex, the guy in charge of books at Huck's Epigram Coffee Bookshop, and this is Bookshop Banter. Today we have Ng Sui San, author of Suka Suka the Cement Truck, and J.H. Low, author of Lemonade Sky. What are these books about? Well, in Suka Suka, the seaman truck learns why it is important to follow instructions and not Suka Suka. As for Lemonade Sky, a boy wants to forge his own path but has to deal with the rules and regulations that we face in life. So, should we always follow instructions? Or can we do things our own way? This is what they are here to discuss today. Are rules meant to be broken or kept? Hello, my name is Ng Sui San. I'm the author of Suka Suka, The Cement Truck. I'm also a drama mama, and by that I don't mean that I'm overly dramatic. I mean that I nurture uh, writing students, and I also am a content creator. So over to Zhu Hong. Hi, uh, my name is J.H. Lo. I'm a picture book artist. So by that I mean like I am someone who illustrate and write my own picture books. Um, what usually inspire me in my creation is the pictures. So I'm really drawn to pictures. I just love to paint. And a lot of times as I paint and I create more pictures, I can see stories among uh, forming and shaping. So that is how I came up with Lemonade Sky. So this is something that you will see. Like there are, oops, maybe I'll show you this one. Yeah, you'll see a lot of pictures forming like this. So in a way, they are like painting on their own. So that's how I usually create my picture books. Yeah. And uh, the paintings are lovely, if I may say so. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going off track a bit here, if you don't mind me. Yeah. But you look at some of the illustrations, just hold them up. Mm. Like, they are very intriguing. It makes me wonder why the boy is in a mask, for example, or a helmet. Right? So it suggests to me that the world is a bit dystopian. But yet, when I read the book, I feel that um, there's a message of hope. Okay. So, uh, quite interesting that you say this, because in, in a way, uh, Lemonade Sky is a book that is really about um, a boy and his toy companions trying to escape from some kind of restriction, breaking away from some kind of rules. And then I know your Suka Suka book, right? The Cement Truck. Uh, it's about getting people to listen to instruction and follow rules. So, what is your opinion about, you know, whether children or people in general should follow or not to follow rules? Okay, I think there's a time and place to follow rules and sometimes you want to break the rules. So if the rules are unjust or unfair, so for example, if the rule is anybody who wears glasses should go to jail, then I will not follow that, real, that rule, right? But if the rule is a rule that protects you, for example, if you drive 100 km per hour, uh, then that's not allowed. Then that is a good rule because it protects you from uh, endangering your own life and killing somebody else, for example. So I think that sometimes you need to have rules so that there is order in society and also so that people will be disciplined. So in Suka Suka, the cement truck is very messy and irresponsible. Does not pay attention to uh, procedure or following rules, but learns that by being so messy and irresponsible, creates a lot of chaos for other people, right? So the whole concept of rules, for example, if you mix cement and you don't follow the measurement of mixing, what's gonna happen? The building may just collapse. That's not good, right? Yeah. So for you, uh, your book is just the opposite. You are kind of encouraging children to be more free, right? Breaking free from the rules, uh, which is quite appropriate sometimes. Maybe you can explain a bit more. Well, if you look at Lemonade Sky, now you have the boy and two of his toy companions. So the whole story is really about them trying to run away from some kind of oppressing force. Now, what is the oppressing force? Um, I think the readers have to make it up themselves. It's not all, it's not very clearly explained in the book. Um, but I think what one of the things I'm trying to say or get people to think about is that 
when there are so much forces around us that kind of um, re restrict or, or dictate what we do, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Mm. So in real life, sometimes that could lead to group think, meaning people, everybody start thinking alike. So Lemonade Sky is a little bit about this boy and the toy companions trying to break away from that kind of group thing, trying to find their own individual individuality, trying to, you know, have a mind of their own. And and I think what you say about uh, Suka Suka Simantra and what happens in Lemonade Sky is really interesting because there are two contrasting kind of idea. Uh, well, we, we need to follow rule, but at the same time, if we are if there are too many rules, then it can also be a problem, isn't it? So, so um, yeah, I just thought it's quite interesting to contrast the two stories. Yeah, I think it's a fine balance. Basically, sometimes we need to follow rules. Sometimes we need to encourage uh, people to break rules by, I suppose, in a meaningful way. And I think that uh, I particularly like also the characters uh, uh, this blue uh, Mr. What Mr. Wang Mr. Wang for example is uh, blue so I wonder why you kind of choose to have him in blue um, actually uh, in Lemonade Sky you get two toy companions uh, one is Mr. Wang the blue figurine and then another one I call it Dino they are just kind of adaptation from my childhood toys so as a child I used to play toys and in fact my inspiration for doing Lemonade Sky a lot of it come from my growing up years uh, as a boy. So I remember growing up in a newly built uh, HDB estate. Uh, it's not so new now. It's been like 40 years ago. But it was a, a very strange time, I would say, because I remember running around in the HDB estate, uh, going into the drains and catch, catching guppies. And there is a real sense of liberation as a young child. So I, when I was creating Lemonade Sky, I was looking at recording my own childhood experience, but also look at how I'm, grow, I, I'm looking after my own girl, bring them up. And most of the time, I kept them in the house. So I do feel like, in a way, I'm trapping them uh, compared to when I was young. I was, about, you know, I was so happy just to run around the neighborhood and my parents were too busy working. They don't have time to look after me. So life were very different between the two generations, between me and my, my children. And I think Lemonade Sky has a little bit of that free, free spirit that I try to say. What about you, Suisa? What inspired you to do Suka Suka? Okay, for me also it's uh, childhood and the sense of nostalgia. So I edited a series of uh, books of naval ships a few years ago. And during that process, somehow I got the idea of, hey, maybe I should do a book about submarine. And then, hey, maybe I should do a book, uh, a book about uh, pump boats, right? Simply because they are very nostalgic. Uh, and also because when I was growing up, I was a tomboy. So I never played with dolls. I would play with the matchbox cars that my brothers had, like the model planes and the matchbox cars. So maybe this is my way of getting my childhood back, I don't know, uh, not quite sure. But I just want to encourage uh, this whole sense of uh, appreciating the simple things in life, which could be uh, things like uh, tri shore for example. Right. Um, so actually, coming back to you for a minute, you're talking about how your children are constrained or you felt that, you, that they are trapped in the house. Uh, That's partly my fault. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking that why did you sort of give them so many rules? I, I don't know. Like... I mean, some of it is because as a parent, we feel like uh, allowing the child to go outside nowadays can be not very safe. Yeah. And during my, my parents' time when I was young, I don't think my parents can afford to look after us. Mm. So sometimes it's more like, I do feel like when we are able to afford more time to spend with the children and we 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 treasure them almost a little bit more or, or becoming very precious to us we tend to hold on tighter to them mm. yeah so that's that's irony i struggle with you no know, in at, on the one hand i want them to be able to grow up independently have an independent mind of their own to be free-spirited but at the same time i am also mindful that 
what I do can sometimes inhibit that free spirited kind of nature I want to find in them. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. So uh you mentioned about bum boats. I remember in my younger days I was like doing the going to Singapore River and do a lot of paintings of the bum boats. Uh, oh. oh yeah, it, it was a beautiful time. So so that, that brings back good memory. Maybe I should do a book about that. So in your book, right? Uh, Suka Suka, is there some morals you want to be able to pass on to the readers? Uh, well, when I first uh, started to write the book, I did not actually have a very specific lesson or theme uh, for any of my uh, children's books originally. But then um, I guess in talking to the team at Epigram, I realized that people don't buy books just to uh, have a good time, especially not parents because they want their kids to learn something. So I realized that I have to build some sort of a lesson in them, in, in my books. So for Suka Suka, the lesson is simply that you have to be responsible, pick up after yourself, uh, don't be selfish. Because if you Suka Suka, meaning anyhow do things, you're just going to ruin things, ruin the environment and uh, cause a mess for other people. Yeah. So as for me, um, you know, sometimes also, there are readers who ask me, what is it that you try to teach in Lemonade Sky? So uh, my response is usually like, to be honest, right, when I was creating the book, I never really think about what is it that I want to teach people. So my focus was always about expressing my emotions and feelings. And I must say, sometimes they are very nebulous. Mm -hmm. So so it's almost like as I'm creating the work, I try to figure out what what I was feeling and, and you know, what is it that I wanted to say. Um, so I wasn't really thinking about teaching any morals, but the thing is, I hope my readers, as they read the book, uh, each one of them will have a different interpretation. Uh, each one of them will find their own meanings. And if they do find something that is useful for them, uh, I'll be very happy. So, so if my readers could just pause and reflect and think about certain issues that's going on around their life, uh, that would be really wonderful. So I say that with, in a way, I do feel like Lemonade Sky is possibly a book that is not only suitable for children. I think even for adults, you know, it's something that it can, it can trigger something when they yeah, read yeah. it. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that because I find it very poetic and very philosophical. When I was reading it, I, it kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, the giving tree to a certain extent, oh, you know, okay. that, that kind of uh, feeling or the little prince, you know, ah, like, you. oh, this, this book is not so straightforward, right? It's actually, there's a more profound or deeper meaning underneath it. Uh, I just wonder, what do your children think about the book? Uh, How old are your kids? My, my kids, they are not kids anymore, actually. Okay. Yeah, they are, they are both in university now. Okay. All right. But uh, the thing is, as I'm creating my book, uh, I think my families are my are my fiercest critic, but but also my lo most loyal supporters. So, for example, my younger daughter she like to paint herself. So, as I'm creating the book, I would show her the painting and discuss with her, you know, how how she felt about the picture. And, and sometimes she will give me, uh, I think, constructive criticism. Mm. And as well as my my elder daughter. Uh, to get her to give me feedback. So I think in our creative process, at least in mine, I do feel like uh, as I create and I have some kind of feedback from people who look at the work as they, they shape up, mm. uh, it's very helpful. But the thing is, because they follow through the creative process, they may not have a fresh pair of eyes, True. like readers who just see the finished product mm. as itself, they will see it quite differently. What about yourself? During your creative journey, uh, are there some obstacles or something that you find useful? Maybe you can share with our audience. Uh, okay, for my very first book, uh, The Great Dragon Warrior, I wrote it without any specific audience in mind, which I think was a mistake in my case, because uh, when I sort of sent it to Epigram, even though uh, I think the editor and publisher liked it, they were asking me, so what age group are you targeting at? Mm. They were a bit puzzled, and they said the language is maybe too too difficult for a uh, children's picture book. So I had to do kind of quite massive editing. First of all, to uh, in terms of the word count, I had to cut it drastically by about 50%. That's number one. 
uh, in terms of vocab, I had to change the vocab. Uh, and then it never occurred to me to think in terms of pagination. So meaning that, okay, if you write a certain content in page two, what illustration accompanies that text? I did not think of that in my first book. But of course, after that, uh, having the benefit of working with Epigram helped a lot. And with the guidance of the editors that I work with, I managed to, I think, come up with uh, more precise and specific uh, text. Yeah, uh, on that note, I also like to thank Epigram because Lemonade Sky is kind of like not the typical children's book. It's a bit like a crossover picture book. What I meant by crossover is that it's those books that, you know, uh, I think children and adults can both enjoy it, albeit in different ways. So uh, I want to thank Epigram for having the, the courage to support uh, the publication of the book. Um, so uh, Suisan, what are your hopes for your book? And uh, what kind of lessons do you hope they can impart to children? Okay, hopes for my book. I suppose uh, the hope of every writer is that the books will sell and be read. So the more readers we have, uh, the better. Uh, in terms of the message, uh, I think I've already spoken about Suka Suka, so maybe I'll talk about Trisho, which um, I tell this story kind of to nag a little bit at uh, the publisher of Epigram. I, I try to embarrass him every time by telling this story, which is that uh, the first book I wanted to do in the Really Really Buddy series was a book on Trisho. But he said, no, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Who's going to buy a book on Trisho? Then uh, we agreed to do a double-decker bus. So, uh, and then my second book, I guess because I talked about enough, he said, okay, la, let's do a trishow book as my, the second book. And the trishow book is really about a trishow learning to be comfortable with himself, learning that it's okay to be slow, that not everybody needs to be a sports car, right? Uh, so I think this is quite important for children to learn you don't necessarily have to be the best or somebody else's definition of the best. You just have to be yourself. Yes. Yeah, yeah I okay. agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think for every one of us, it's not really about being the best, but being the best version of ourselves. Yeah. The yeah. only person you want to be better is yourself, right? Yeah, wow. Well, very well so, said. Uh, <laughs> so uh, as far as Lemonade Sky go, um, all I wish is that, you know, uh, readers can get to enjoy the book. Uh, like I say, it's a book that is comprised many uh, different paintings. So individually, I hope people can really appreciate what I'm trying to create here. I think every painting carries its own emotions, own feelings, but collectively, they also become a sequential uh, narrative. They tell a story that is uh, somewhat cryptic, enigmatic, you know, uh, not very sure where it's going, but at the same time, it will make people wonder and, and uh, uh, so really I just hope that people can enjoy the book yeah okay do we have any more questions I think the last question was that is on here is what are your personal takes on the topic right. of rules which I think we've covered yeah some, some, we've we covered, have covered yeah. somewhat okay I don't think we are in this agreement you know when we talk about rules uh, extremes are never good so if, if we have a very strict, very draconic kind of society, very authoritarian kind of society, obviously people will find it uh, hard to breathe. It's mm. very, very pressurizing to some extent. But we also cannot have a world that is totally free. Mm. Uh, and everybody just do whatever they like to do. Even if like Suka Suka, it causes inconvenience or mm. hurt to other people. So I think it's about that balance. And I think you'll find a balance somewhere between the Lemonade Sky and Suka Suka. So you have to buy both books. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, nice. yeah. So, so maybe I will just say a closing thing about Lemonade Sky and, and sure. then you say something about Suka Suka. I think for Lemonade Sky, uh, there is this thing about like, I often find adults telling uh, children what to do and what not to do. And one of the things that comes quite often is, you know, in art lessons, when children are drawing, sometimes you see the adults telling them, no, the sky is blue color. You must paint it blue. And I always wonder why the sky has to be blue. And you do find some children paint the sky in different colors. Some paint it pink, some paint it 
orange and some paint it yellow and some paint it lemonade. So I think lemonade sky is alluding to that, that sometimes there is, um, there's a beauty in the innocence and in the free spirited way children go about doing things. And we ought to pause and appreciate that beauty. Mm. But I think also it's kind of interesting to me why you chose lemonade. Is it to do with the saying, if you have lemons, then... Uh, is that I didn't think along that way. Okay. But, but like I say, I, I really... I do find it very interesting to listen to how readers feedback to me about their own interpretation of Lemonade Sky. Right. So for me, I, I just choose Lemonade Sky maybe because it's, I, I was listening to the Beatles' Yellow Submarine at ah, that point. Okay. So the, 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 the notion of yellow color just popped into my head and it became the title of my book. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so for me, I deliberately uh, chose titles with a very singlish uh, word in there. At least for the really really buddy series. So for the first book it was Yaya, the double decker bus, and I think everybody who is Singaporean understands what Yaya means. Uh don't be Yaya, don't be <laughs> arrogant, right? And the second book was uh Chop Chop the Trishaw, because chop chop basically means be fast, right? So uh the trishaw was trying to be fast and speed everywhere. And suka suka basically means anyhow, don't care about consequences. Uh, so I think the title kind of reflects the character of the books. So please come down to Hux Epigram Coffee Bookshop to buy our books. You can see Yaya the Double Decker Bus, Chop Chop the Trishaw, and Suka Suka the Cement Truck, as well as. Yes, please come down and grab a piece of Lemonade Sky. I'm sure it will make your life a little bit more vibrant. Do support local artists and make Singapore a more creative place. Do support Singlish. Bye! Bye!